Okay, so in this video I'll be putting the uh, radio on the air, and uh, but let's first recap uh, with the diagram and show the, the new components involved. So the major new component we got added uh, to, put the to put the radio on the air is the TALO detector board. Now I'll include a link to a video that I did that describes the board, I won't go into a lot of detail here. Um, but uh, I did build up this board and I've, I've kind of used it quite a few times before. But basically the board acts as a front end and direct conversion receiver, which takes the incoming RF, pushes it through a bandpass filter, and then uh, proceeds to mix it with the local oscillator, which is the SI5351, which is emitting a 0 and 90 degree signal at the received frequency. So we mix the incoming RF with this 0 and 90 degrees LO signal and that produces an I and a Q audio signal um, which is phase shifted uh, zero, uh, 90 degrees with respect to each other. This I and Q audio signal passes through the PMOD board which we described in the, in the previous uh, video and that PMOD board's job is to uh, basically transform the audio to I2S signals for communication with the ESP32. In the ESP32, uh, we first uh, pass in the I2S signals, the left and the right, the I and the Q signals. The I signal is, ha is uh, subtracted in phase by 45 degrees. The Q signal is added in phase 45 degrees, the result of which is a 90 degree shift between the I and the Q signal. And then in the uh, phase processor, those two signals are either added together or subtracted depending on one, whether you want the upper or lower sideband. And of course, if you want the upper sideband, the lower sideband is suppressed and vice versa. Okay, so here's the uh, setup here. Talo uh, detector is uh, this component right here. RF comes in through here, passes through a band pass filter, which is tuned for around about 14 megahertz. Uh, the signal gets split into a phase and antiphase signal. Here is the SI5351, which is generating the, uh, LO, uh, uh, the LO signal at 0 and 90 degrees. And then this IC and this, uh, this uh, capacitor and resistor, set of capacitor and resistors here is, is the TALO detector itself. And finally, before the signal leaves, there is some audio amplification here provided by this op amp. So the signal leaves here, comes back in through to the PMOD board here, gets transformed to I2S and then uh, passes into the ESP32 for uh, audio processing. And these links here from the ESP32 through to the, through the uh, TALO detector board, these are I2C signals that are used to control the frequency output of the SI5351. Before we get this uh, on the air, what I'm going to do is uh, just test it in the garage here. And to do so, I'm, uh, I've got my signal generator here emitting a 14.2 megahertz signal at minus 60 dBm. And uh, this is the user interface that uh, I, uh, I showed in the last video. Uh, let's just walk through some of the changes though. Uh, the frequency uh, is pretty much unchanged. But I have added uh, functionality to the up and down button. So as you uh, nudge this down and up, it uh, changes the frequency by, four, uh, by 500 hertz. I've also got a USB and an LSB button here. And this actually, um, uh, this is working actually. So USB and LSB, uh, whether you select the upper or lower sideband, uh, is all done in uh, digital signal processing in the ESP32. The, uh, the, the keypad is the same from the last time around, just change the colors on it a bit. And then I've got a volume slider here over, the, over on the right hand side here. And again, uh, that, uh, the, the, the gain control is done in DSP on the ESP32. So anyway, let's listen to uh, some signals. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the signal generator is emitting at 14.2 megahertz. So for upper side band, as I tune down, you can hear that tone. So this is basically a 1500 hertz tone uh, because I'm on, a, on, I'm on upper sideband. So let's change to lower sideband and as I tune up now, there's that 
tone coming through from the lower sideband this time. And just to confirm that we're uh, actually getting, let me turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear that a bit better. So just to confirm we have the other sideband suppression, let's tune down and you can hear, rather, <laughs> I was going to say see, you can hear that uh, there is no, uh, there is no uh, tone coming through there. Let's just go back up. There's the lower sideband. If I change it to upper sideband, So that confirms that the upper and lower side brand is, uh, is working as expected. So let's see some other functions. So let's turn down the uh, signal a little bit. I'm now down at minus 70 dBm and I'll increase the volume and you can hear that volume increase there. Let me turn it back down again. And then finally, just note down the bottom here. So this is the console log from the ESP32. And you can see as I'm changing this, so let's put in 14.2 megahertz. You can see there's a command that comes through to the ESP32 running on that, uh, running that web server. So that's basically all I want to show on the lab. So that confirms that the upper and lower sideband suppression is working, that the uh, user interface is working as expected. So let's move out to uh, uh, to the radio room where I've got a radio set up, and uh, we'll hear some real uh, real life signals. So that's just a sampling of uh, the uh, 20 meter band uh, reception on the ESP32 radio. Um, I did have to wait till the afternoon. Um, that's when uh, 20 meters usually picks up from kind of 4 p.m., 5 p.m. onwards. Um, one of the things that I did change uh, between this morning and now is I changed the audio sampling rate from 44.1 kilohertz, uh, which is what it was originally, to 22 kilohertz. Uh, for voice reception, I don't really need that higher sampling rate and uh, obviously the higher processing that that uh, sampling rate requires. I also increased the number of taps, uh, DSP taps, to 400 for the phase processing. Uh, and uh, that additional taps uh, will give me greater um, sideband suppression uh, as well as a, fatter, a flatter phase, uh, phase shift curve 
uh, across the uh, across the, uh, the the various um, uh, audio uh, frequencies. I have included in the code a variety of sample uh, rate and tap combinations, and you'll find them in those two header files, coefs.h, which has all the 44.1 kilohertz uh, 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 coefficients, and coefs underscore 22,000.h, which contains the uh, 22 kilohertz um, uh, coefficients. So that's a wrap for this video, uh, the receiver portion. And what I'll be moving on to next is uh, streaming the output audio over Wi-Fi. And I think that's probably going to be uh, a bit of a challenge. So some of the uh, challenges I, 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 I'm kind of anticipating here is, and the first one is which codec to use. So I'd originally thought that the ADF came with an MP3 encoder. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't. It only comes with a decoder. Um, there are some projects out there, uh, and some even for the ESP32, uh, that do MP3 encoding. And I'll probably have a bit of a play around with them. But what I think I probably will do is start with a simple uh, WAV encoder. Uh, WAV is uh, basically an uncom uncompressed uh, pulse code modulation format, uh, pretty much the same as the I2S format that's... Um, uh, that, that I'm already using. The second challenge is how I'm actually going to stream the uh, audio itself. So I've done some simple streaming from web servers before. Uh, it's relatively straightforward, but I've never tried it on the ESP32. So that might require a bit of experimentation, uh, definitely more to come. Um, I am a bit worried about uh, core utilization. And uh, one of the other things, and this is kind of the final problem, um, you might have heard in the reception sort of some pops and crackles, even when there's no uh, radio reception. And I tracked that down, and what that basically is, is the Wi-Fi interfering with the Talo detector. Um, now, I, I'm probably going to have to put some shielding around the Talo detector to, to um, sort of isolate it from uh, the emissions from the uh, Wi-Fi transceiver that's on board the ESP32. But that certainly is going to, I'm going to have to do that if I'm going to actually stream audio. Then I'll have a sort of a constant stream of Wi-Fi traffic. So anyway, that's coming up probably in the next video. Like I said, I'm probably going to start with uh, WAV encoding, see if I can stream that. Uh, and that'll be coming up in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video.